So, you're here to learn to kill vampires, are ya? <laughs> you're making a big mistake. There's nothing more powerful than us. Wrong. I know exactly how to slay you undead monsters. Don't tell the dev team, but I read the Wildlander wiki on vampires, so you don't have to. Because we have already covered basic animals, as well as dragons in previous videos, I put out a poll to see what you all would be interested in seeing next in one of our guide videos. With an overwhelming 60% of you voting to cover vampires next, I got to studying. The first thing I learned about vampires was, they have a lot of different resistances to a multitude of effects and damage types. Even the lower level vampires resist way more than I expected. With a notable 50-75% to resistance to lightning magic, and an unmatchable 95-145% to resistance to frost damage, they are a huge nuisance for spellcasters who are purposely not using fire magic. In my first major playthrough of the game, I played a dark elf who did not use fire whatsoever. This was a choice I made that ended up significantly increasing the difficulty for a number of enemies, one being vampires. They are also completely immune to poison damage, paralysis, and unrelenting force, with a minor resistance to staggering in general. Adding on to that, vampires also have a 20% natural resistance to magic, topping off their already high resistance to frost and lightning magic. Vampires also have a minimum of 620 health, making them very tanky. Annoyingly, they regenerate 1 health per second as well, making them a bit of a time-sensitive enemy since they have multiple options for healing themselves. I want to take a quick pause before we move on to the next portion of this video. I know it can be difficult to gauge how powerful your character is versus different enemies. I want to help put into perspective what difficulty range vampires are. If you cannot slay giants and mammoths with ease, if you're having difficulty taking on dragons consistently, or if dwarven ruins are somewhat difficult for you, there's a really good chance you need to level up plenty more and or get much better gear, enchantments, etc. before trying to take them on. Vampires tend to fit best in the late game portion of the player experience. You will also run into ebony vampires who are the boss vampires. If you're having difficulty with traditional vampires, you just don't stand a chance against the boss versions. Their minimum health is three times that of basic vampires. Depending on enchantments, they can have a greater health regeneration per second, and they can conjure dragon priests to fight by their side for five minutes. If you're using basic arrows, you may as well just run away and cut your losses because normal arrows only do one-third of their normal damage to vampires. When using melee weapons, something else to consider is that while the wiki doesn't state the exact resistance, it does let us know that vampires suffer much less from non-bladed weapons. Or in other words, using sword and axe are your best bet when dealing with these undead. On the flip side, there are a couple things vampires are naturally weak against. Shifting focus to the vampire's weaknesses, silver weapons do a total of 150% damage to them, making them very suitable for the job. As previously mentioned, fire is also a great option since they have a 75% weakness to it. My recommendation for melee-based characters is to get a silver version of your weapon of choice and to either enchant it yourself or to have a mage from the college enchant your weapon with fire damage. For this, you either need to be part of the college, which has the requirement of casting one of three apprentice spells, or an alternate option, if you choose to be dragonborn but don't use magic, is for you to progress the main story until you are in search of the Elder Scroll. At this point, you can enter the college and have your gear enchanted. If you are using the enchanting skill and go up the right side of the perk tree, two notable perks to get are Arcane Experimentation and Artificer's Insight. I explain how these work in my guide to enchanting video linked in the description. The reason these perks are useful is because they unlock several unique enchantments. 
most notably Flame Burst, which does 25 fire damage per hit to help take vampires down much more quickly, as well as Spell Breaking, which has a 33% chance to do 100 points of magic damage and dispel all magic from the target. The reason I recommend the College Enchanter is because Sergius Tyrannius is the only level 100 enchanter in Skyrim. On screen is a screenshot of the other enchanters in the event that the college is simply not an option for you. Another option for paladin style characters is from the restoration tree. Sunfire, Sunburst, and Sunfire Cloak are helpful options as they are specifically aimed for taking down undead targets. Wards are also helpful to help reduce incoming damage from vampires when they're casting spells, such as Drain Life, which will let them absorb 35 points of your health, magicka, and stamina per second. Two restoration perks that sync well with this are Mysticism, which increases the effectiveness of spells cast on the undead, as well as their duration, and Improved Wards, which increases the efficacy of your wards, as well as gives them a 25% chance to absorb hostile spells cast on you. Vampires have a long list of different deadly spells to make your day worse. With this in mind, I highly recommend maxing out your magic resistance before going to fight them. While I have talked about how this can be done in other videos, some of the most common options is to have your armor enchanted with resist magic enchantments. Depending on your playstyle, it may be useful to fortify resistance to certain types of damage based off of your build. For instance, if you are playing as a mage-based character, increasing your resistance to lightning damage helps keep your magicka pool available. Similarly, for heavily armored two-handers, a resistance to frost damage keeps your stamina pool up so you can get around and deal ample damage with each swing. Carrying potions of magic resistance as well as resistance to the different elements is another obvious choice. Taking a quick look into races, Bretons are probably the best option because of their innate 20% resistance to magicka and their once a day ability to absorb 100% of magicka from hostile spells for 8 seconds. I think all other options are useful and or viable in their own way, with one exception, High Elf. I'm sure you could make up for the 40% weakness to magic, but it sounds like an incredible disadvantage, and for that reason, I do not recommend using it to start if you plan on doing vampire content. In regards to standing stones, there are a couple choices best suited for this enemy, one of which being the Lord Stone, which gives you a 15% magic resistance and 120% damage resistance in general. The other option is the Atronach Stone. If you somehow get past the early game and get a handle on keeping up your magicka, it really helps since you have a 50% chance to absorb incoming enemy spells, and you likely have a pretty hefty magicka pool to boot. Something else to be mindful of is that vampires have a chance of infecting you quite often. There are a couple ways to deal with this, one of which being potions of cure disease. You can also have the disease removed from their shrines. Preventative options are to choose a race with a natural resistance to disease, as well as to enchant your gear with disease resistance enchantments. Now, this would not be a proper guide to vampires if I didn't talk about their greatest enemy. Dawnbreaker. This weapon is a vampire slang menace. Not only does it do 50 fire damage, but it also causes fear and undead up to level 35. It also has a 2% chance of causing an area of effect blast that does 2,500 damage to surrounding enemies. If that weren't enough, it also counts as silver, meaning it does an additional 50% damage per hit. Vampires just don't stand a chance. Those tips are nothing. You still can't take me out. A new hand touches the beacon. Ah! Not Dawnbreaker again! Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Did I miss anything? Anything else I could have explained better? Let me know in the comments below. If you would like to see more videos like this, leave a like and consider subscribing. Stay safe, Wadlanders.